Oof. What's going on, Fishaholics? So, this big, lovely bag right here is my tackle bag. <laughs> and uh, it's pretty much the bag that I take with me everywhere whenever I'm going surf casting. And I never leave home without it, whether I'm going down to the shore for a day, you know, or if I'm going out to Montauk for the entire summer. And uh, it has, has surf casting gear in here, it has, you know, some kayaking gear, but for the most part, it's, uh, you know, all surf casting tackle. And uh, first off, I also just want to say that uh, I'm in New Jersey right now, but I'm actually in Florida. I just wanted to make this video for you guys so that I had something to upload while I'm down uh, in Florida for spring break. And uh, it's kind of weird to say that I'm, you know, I'm going down to Florida because uh, right now it's 70 degrees in North Jersey. Uh, you know, I'm wearing shorts right now and, you know, I'm, I don't even know why I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt. It's, uh, it's freaking gorgeous out here. But uh, basically, I just want to go over my surf casting tackle or uh, what I basically, you know, never leave, you know, the car without and, you know, go out on the beach, um, you know, without. And um, this, obviously, I'm not bringing this entire bag out on the beach or out on the jetty. So that's where this bag here comes into play. My little surf belt with, uh, you know, a little Aquaskins bag here that has three, you know, lure tubes. And then I have my jig bag here and I'm going to get into, you know, what exactly or specifically I always have for daytime fishing, you know, for the most part of the season I have in that bag, but I'm also just going to go over quickly what I have in my big car bag here. And uh, of course, first off is bucktails. Never leave home without bucktails. Never leave your car without bucktails. And I'll get into the sizes of bucktails um, in a little bit and then... The next box that I have is kind of just a miscellaneous hooks, jigs, and rigs box. Nothing, you know, nothing special really. And uh, the next box is mostly diamond jigs and tins. And then also I, you know, I throw random, you know, lures in here like SP minnows and, uh, you know, little swimmers and stuff like that. You know, that this is my new favorite little swimmer, the uh, RM Smith. And uh, this was, you know, unbelievable you know i i luckily brought this out to the beach with me or actually i forgot it but i knew i had it in my car so you know the fish were feeding on metal lip swimmers and really tiny bait so i ran back to my car got this bait and then the bite died but then once like guys started leaving the beach then all of a sudden the fish turned on and i had you know fish on every cast on this little rm smith little swimmer here and um yeah so that's my diamond jig box that's box number three then we got here just uh, kind of another miscellaneous box. I mean, it's it's not really organized. I mean, what fisherman is you know s you know so organized to the T? Uh, I just got some uh, tattoo darters in here, and uh, you know some giant pencil poppers, which I very you know very rarely use. Uh, these tattoo darters though are really an unbelievable bait uh, for stripers and bluefish, and you know I have a variety of colors of those colors in here. And, uh, you know, a little black darter. Now this box here is just, you know, got some darters in there and, uh, you know, some pencil poppers, you know, has one Polaris popper in there. And that, you know, for the most part, you know, this video is just going to be about, you know, daytime fishing, not, you know, using darters at night or anything. Just what I have, you know, always in my small tackle bag. Um, you know, what plugs I always have in there for, you know, daytime fishing, usually through, you know, June, th you know, to September or something. And um, this box here is just a bunch of needle fishes and, I don't know, I have this, I have this weird, <laughs> this weird lure in there. That's, uh, I don't know if it's a hoagie or not, uh, but, uh, you know, some more little darters. This is a cool little needle fish, you know pretty lure it's almost like too pretty that you know you're hoping to throw and not bang into a rock or not catch a bluefish with and okay I thought that was it I guess I have more boxes than I thought I had in here and then uh, yeah this box here this is just a pencil popper box has you know a mini pencil popper which um, actually after I go through my bag I have a new mini pencil popper that I really want to show you guys it was custom made for me and uh, that'll be really interesting so I'm gonna show you that in a little bit and uh, you know I just got some other pencil poppers <laughs> the bottom 
hook of that I think got ripped off by a bluefish. Uh, that, you know, that just happened. Uh, yeah, and so I got my pencil popper box. That's one, seven, and that's, this is number eight. So I have eight different boxes full of different plugs. And actually I'm missing, I just noticed I'm missing one because this bucktail box right here, this is all one ounce to, uh, you know, I think four ounce where I have another box that's for, you know, three eighths, quarter ounce up to three quarter ounce. And I don't know where that box is. And, you know, it's probably in my basement. Anyway, let's move, start moving on to my personal little tackle bag that I always have on me when I'm hitting the beach or hitting the jetty. And uh, first off, you know, I have to mention the bucktail. This is like a no brainer. I will never go down to the beach without a three quarter ounce bucktail, a one ounce bucktail, and I think this is a two ounce, and a two ounce bucktail. I will never go down to the beach without these three sizes of bucktails. And, um, you know, if obviously if I'm going to be fishing intercoastal waters or, you know, bays or, you know, inlets, I'll probably stick with more, you know, three quarter ounce, half ounce and, you know, quarter ounce. So I'll also pack those smaller bucktails in my bag. But if I'm just going to be fishing, say, off Montauk Lighthouse or the ocean, you know, down in Jersey or, uh, you know, say like a really deep inlet with a lot of current, then, you know, for the most part, I know I'm going to be throwing a one ounce bucktail or maybe even a two ounce bucktail, depending on, uh, you know, how bad uh, the current is or how strong the current is. And then uh, moving on, you know, I'm going to go over another simple one and that is, uh, you know, a swim bait. And uh, my favorite swim baits or my fa favorite swim baits that I used to throw a lot were the uh, Berkeley Flatback Shad, which is uh, this one right here. Since they discontinue this and I'm, you know, running down to my last few packages of uh, Berkeley Flatback Shads, I started using five inch Yum Money Minnows. And uh, same with the Berkeley Flatback Shad, I would rig it on a, you know, half ounce to one ounce Kalen's bullet head jig head. You know, and if you've been watching my videos for a while, you, you know that I, you, you know, I mentioned this, you know, set up a lot, you know, these two swim baits and, you know, I catch a lot of fish on them. Now moving on to the more interesting plugs. I'm gonna start off with the pencil popper. And this pencil popper here, I think is a two and a half ounce or two ounce Gibbs pencil popper. And it's actually a discontinued color, a color that uh, Gibbs doesn't even make anymore. And for whatever reason, they love, or fish just love the blue eye. You know, I don't know why, it's just, it, it's really weird. I mean, I've sat next to the guys under Montauk Lighthouse and through this plug and every cast, boom, boom, boom you know, I've hooked up with a fish and then guys next to me are throwing, you know, other pencil poppers and not getting a tap or they're throwing something, even they're even throwing a Gibbs pencil popper that's very similar. It actually has a red eye and they're still not getting as many bites. This is the pencil popper with the red eye. And I mean, it's very similar, but believe it or not, they, for whatever reason, there's a big difference. And this is the color I believe Gibbs still makes. And, uh, you know, me and my father, you know, actually love this color so much. We even bought a bunch of these and then, you know, tried to, you know, replicate it and, you know, painted it, put glitter on it and, you know, did the little blue eye. And for whatever reason, it didn't actually seem to, you know, catch as, you know, any, you know, any more fish than this one did. This is the original. And I believe we have maybe only a dozen of these left. So uh, the stock is dwindling. They're definitely not a, a top, uh, top blue fish lure to throw. Um, and then another bait that is very similar to a pencil popper that um, I only really started putting in my bag um, you know, this year was the um, Tsunami Talking Popper. It wasn't until I say, I would say October that I really started carrying these plugs and they're really, really lifelike. I love the five inch version, just, you know, the five inch version is awesome. You know, perfect for, you know, a smaller profile bait. And then here's the uh, six inch version and they just, you know, fly. They absolutely just fly, you know, casting them, you know, with the right tackle. And, uh, you know, those are another pencil popper type bait that I'm always going to have at least one after this uh, 2016 season in my bag. And then moving on, uh, the next bait I want to mention is obviously a favorite. You guys know the name of this, an SP Minnow. You know, a nice, you know, skinny profile bait that, uh, you know, just straight up catches fish. You know, it matches, you know, the bait fish profile. It swims like a bait fish and, you know, stripers just love it. I've always preferred the 
floating um, SP minnow, but there are a sinking one if, you, if you're looking for something a little bit heavier and uh, you know you want to cast it out a little bit further or if the fish are in deeper water. And uh, for the most part though, I'm always going to have a floating SP minnow on me. And you know, I've caught fish you know, on an SP minnow in you know, two feet of water and I've caught them suspended you know, or right under the surface in say 50 feet of water. You know, they just love SP minnows. The next plugs that I just want to go over real quick are diamond jigs and uh, you know Hopkins spoons or just metal. I always have at least one crippled herring. This is a one and a half ounce crippled herring and uh, perfect for matching sm small profile baits. You might see me throwing this little tiny thing down the beach and that's probably because the bite's not too hot and I'm just you know begging for a bite. So you know it's always good to have something small like that you know on you just to be able to catch a fish and uh, another little small plug or just plug in general is the Polaris popper and I'll always try to have enough room in my bag for a small little one ounce Polaris popper uh, Gibbs Polaris popper but obviously as the season progresses and the bait gets a little bit bigger then I'll switch over to a larger Gibbs Polaris popper that I'll always 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 have in my plug bag okay now finally the moment that I've been waiting for to share with you guys. These are a couple plugs, new plugs that I got sent out to me from JP Outdoors from Tom and Peyton. And this one plug here is um, a custom plug that he made, you know, especially for me after I requested it to him. And it's a mini little pencil popper. This thing is gorgeous. It's almost, you know, like so perfect that I don't even want to use it, or at least I'm going to know, you know, especially not to throw it when there's any kind of fish with teeth around. You know, that's a 100% guarantee. You know, I'm probably going to use it for stripers, and uh, I'm actually probably using it down in Florida right now, maybe even for snook, and uh, just a really awesome bait. And uh, yeah, it's perfect for, you know, matching the hatch of, you know, that small profile bait, peanut bunker, you know, maybe herring, maybe mullet, you know, any kind of small bait that's uh, swimming in the water. And, you know, I haven't fished it yet or, you know, but probably in my next video or next coming videos, if you guys are watching, you might see me catch something interesting on this little bait right here. He also threw in another plug here, which I'm really excited about. And this is just a small little metal lip swimmer. And uh, this is another little plug that it's, uh, it's not my top priority to, to have in my small plug bag, but it's definitely going to be something that I'm going to have in my large, um, you know, plug bag. Oh. And, um, you know, there's always going to be that day where, you know, for whatever reason, the stripers are wanting metal lip swimmers or, you know, they're wanting a certain type of, uh, you know, a certain type of lure. And that's when I'm going to go to that bigger, ba that bigger bag and always have that, you know, one lure that, you know, can catch fish. I hope you enjoyed this uh, type of video. You know, I got a lot of requests during the fishing season from subscribers to make a, t a video like this. So I figured, you know, today would be a perfect day because tomorrow, you know, tomorrow is my flight to Florida. So I'm kind of just waiting around doing some packing now. And I figured, you know, I might as well throw together a quick little video. So I have something to upload for you guys while I'm down in Florida for a week. But uh, anyways, if I missed any plugs that you think I should have in my bag or someone else should have in their bag, post that in the comment section below. And if you want to see more videos like this, say maybe a nighttime, you know, fishing bag, because for night fishing, it's a completely different ball game. I, you know, have a whole different setup of uh, different plugs that I always carry in my bag, you know, when I'm fishing, you know, in the dark or at night. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much about it. Um, you know, again, check out JP Outdoors in the description below for, you know, more information about these awesome plugs that they custom make or hand make. And um, yeah, that's about it. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And yes, I'm filming this video on top of my sister's car. If you're wondering what this is or what platform this is, she's got like a little smart car. So it worked out perfect because I'm tall. But um, yeah, take care, catch some fish guys and never forget, live to fish, fish to live.